evening, everybody, from San Diego Stadium. We bid you welcome to Reds Baseball. The Reds and the Padres getting ready to have at it in the second game of this four-game series. Cincinnati winning the opener last night by a score of 5-3 to three as Frank Pastore picked up his sixth victory. And Johnny Bench, for the third time in his Major League career, hammered three home runs, all of them coming off loser left-hander Randy Jones. So the Reds will be trying to extend their winning streak to four as left-hander Charlie Liebrand shoots for his fourth victory of the season. The Padres will be going with a young right-hander Steve Muir making his first turn of the year. We'll be back to take a look at tonight's starting lineups in just a moment. If you're ready now, the starting lineups tonight for the Cincinnati Reds leading off in center field, Dave Collins. Batting second at shortstop, Dave Concepcion. Ken Griffey will play right field and bat third. Getting fourth in left field, George Foster. Batting number five at first base, Harry Spillman. Getting sixth at third base, Ray Knight. Johnny Bench will do the catching in bat number seven. Hitting eighth at second base, Ron Oster. And batting ninth and pitching for Cincinnati, left-hander Charlie Liebrand. Again for the Reds, it's Collins in center field, Concepcion at shortstop, and Griffey in right field. Foster in left, Spillman at first base, Knight at third. With Bench catching, Oster at second, and Liebrand pitching. For the Padres, their leadoff batter will be the shortstop, Ozzie Smith. Jerry Mumphrey will bat second and play center field. Gene Richards will be in left field and bat third. Dave Winfield will hit in the cleanup spot and he'll play right field. Batting fifth, the catcher, Gene Tennis. Hitting number six, Willie Montanez at first base. Aurelio Rodriguez will play third base and bat number seven. Hitting eighth at second base, Barry Evans. And batting ninth, the San Diego pitcher, right-hander, Steve Mura. Once more for the Padres, it's Smith at shortstop, Mumphrey in center field, and Richards in left field. Winfield in right, tennis catching, Montanez at first. With Rodriguez at third, Evans at second, and Mura on the mound. Dave Collins will lead it off for Cincinnati, and Dave in a bit of a slump right now, trying to get himself back on the right track, hitting 273. He's homered once. He's driven in 12 runs. Collins, Concepcion, and Griffey here in the top half of the first inning. Rodriguez a step in on the grass at third base as Mura looks to tennis. And the pitch to Collins is taken for a ball. It gets through the mid of Gene Tennis. And this game is underway. One ball and no strikes on Dave Collins. 0 for 5 in the leadoff slot last night. Mira throws to the plate. Collins takes. That's in for a call strike. Count evens one ball and one strike. Mira, 25 years old. Had a fine collegiate career at Tulane University, after which the Padres drafted him up and in for a ball, two and one. This is the second of a seven-game road trip. Two more coming up here, and then we'll be in Los Angeles Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. Collins out in front, batting left-handed against the Padres' right-hander, who kicks and fires, and that pitch is down low ball three. Three balls and a strike on Dave Collins. Near a throwing, and Collins takes ball four, so Dave walks to begin the ball game. That'll bring up shortstop Dave Concepcion as we check out the Padres defensively. Montanez at first, Evans at second, Smith at shortstop, Rodriguez at third. An outfield of Richards left, Mumphrey center, Winfield right, tennis, and Mura, the Padres battery. Davey checking in at 213 with a couple of home runs and 15 RBIs. Collins with a leadoff walk. And as Davey edges away from the bag and the holding Montanez at first, there's a throw that way. Collins back. Dave, the leader in stolen bases on the club. He has swiped 11 and 13 attempts. Here with a pause and a pitch to Concepcion. It's up and away, ball one. As we mentioned last night, pitching has been the strongest suit of this San Diego club under rookie manager Jerry Coleman. A team earned run average of 331, which is certainly one of the best in the National League. They have had trouble scoring runs. Throw to first again. The loss last night sent them one game under the 500 mark at 22 wins and 23 losses, and they're trying to break a four-game losing streak tonight. 1-0 pitch. Swung on ground ball second. Evans will go on to Smith on to Montanez. Double play.
Well, following the walk to Collins, Dave Concepcion hits into a 4-6-3 double play. Two-out batter will be right fielder Ken Griffey. Ed Montague, the plate umpire, Dutch Rennert, Harry Wendell Stad, and Frank Pulley at first, second, and third. Two gone. Griffey batting 299. Three homers and 19 RBIs. Mira wheels and deals, and the pitch is over at the knees for a strike. Outfield straight away for the left-handed batter. One and one to him. Griffey in the series opener had an infield single and four times up. He was on base in the eighth inning when Bench hit his third home run of the night. That proved as things turned out to be the big blow. Two and one. Interesting. Jerry Coleman was very upset at that home run. Boy, I'm telling you, he sure was. They say it's the first time this season he's refused to answer reporters' questions. They asked him about it, and he said, go talk to Randy Jones. Apparently, Coleman wanted Randy to pitch around John. Here's a drive in the right center field. That's going to be a gapper. Ball will be cut off on the warning track by Mumphrey, but uh, Griffey easily in at second base with a stand-up double. So with two out of the inning, Griffey doubles into the power alley in right center, his eighth two-base hit of the season. That keeps the inning going for George Foster. Really, uh... Based on what Randy Jones said, the uh, bench on two of the three home runs hit good pitches. A good in terms of where Randy wanted them, and John just went down and, what did Randy say, buggy whipped him into the seats and left. That's what he talked, the way he talked about the third one. Was went down and buggy whipped it. Well, <laughs> uh, that's what John said the same thing, and he had two good pitches, his first and third. The other, the uh, second one was uh, a pitch, I guess, to feel you should hit, but the other two uh, down, uh, pitches down. But as I said, John's a, uh, I think it's a good low ball hitter. Foster trying to get Griffey home from second base as Mira gets a fastball over. Strike. George batting 244 with seven home runs and 20 RBIs. Went 0 for 4 last night. Reds are batting in the top of the first, two down. The stretch in the pitch, up and away, one ball, one strike. Field deep and toward left for Foster. Muir looking back at second. Pitches to Foster. Swing and a miss. A breaking ball. And George behind at one ball and two strikes. Well, I'll tell you, he hit one last night. To left field in the fourth inning leading it off. Just got too much on top of the ball. A line drive hit to Gene Richards. And if he'd have gotten it squarely, they might have still been looking for it. Bouncing ball to third. Rodriguez has it. His play will be to first, and that ends the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one man left. After a half inning of play in game two at San Diego, Reds nothing, and Padres are coming up. Montreal beating the Cardinals 6-2 to two at the end of four. Dawson and Carter home runs. 1-0 pitch. Spillman lines a base hit to right field. Boy, has he been swinging a bat this season, either off the bench or in the starting lineup. Second hit for the Reds, and here's third baseman Ray Knight. The other two West Coast games will have the Braves at L.A., Matula versus Hooten, and Houston at San Francisco. We gave you the starters earlier in that one, force against Blue. Base hit to right by Spillman to begin the second. Ray Knight hitting a 275 with five home runs and a club leading 29 runs batted in. Mira brings it on up there, and Knight takes it low and away. Ball one. The American League, they're in the ninth inning at Boston, where the Red Sox hold a 5-1 to one lead over the Brewers. Seattle and Cleveland have played two innings after an hour and 42-minute rain delay. They're scoreless. And the cheer you hear in the background is because the chicken has made his first appearance of the night. 1-0, Steve Mira with Ray Knight. Swung on and hit back into deep left field. Going back is Gene Richards at the wall. It's off the fence. Coming on to third is Spillman. Here's Knight coming to second. He's in standing. Ray Knight doubling high off.
off the wall in left field and elected to come in standing up rather than sliding at second base, which is a little bit surprising and could have turned out to be a very testy play. Well, uh, it would have been very testy if Barry Evans had been on the bag. He was about eight feet to left field uh, side of the bag, and had he been back on the bag, I'm afraid Ray might have been out number one. But the Reds are setting up shop here in the second on a single and a double by the Georgia Connection. Bringing to the plate Johnny Bench. Ray Knight with his 13th double of the season. They gave Johnny quite an ovation last night when he hit his third home run. And now trying to do damage with runners at second and third and nobody out. Tennis settling in behind the plate with the tying runs in scoring position. Mura delivers, bench checks, that's the ball. Other American League scores in the bottom of the seventh, Toronto and the Yankees scoreless. Jim Clancy against Louis Tion, a good one there. Detroit beating California 5-1 to one after 4.5. The 1-0 to bench, swing and a miss. Kansas City 6-1 over Chicago after 3.5 innings. Minnesota a run up on Baltimore 2-1 to one there in the sixth. And Oakland leading Texas 3-0 after 5. Here it's 2-0 San Diego. Bench, did he get around on that pitch? Yes, he did, says Dutch Renner at the first base umpire. Here with two breaking balls in a row to John to get out ahead one and two. Ronnie Oster coming up next. Spillman at third, Knight at second. Reds with a threat. Mura trying to keep him off the board and facing a big bat here in Mr. Bench. Low and away, two and two. John's three home runs last night give him a total of six on the year and 16 RBIs to go with a 226 batting average. He has now hit 306 home runs as a catcher, seven short of Yogi Berra's major league record. Two and two on number five. Mura kicks and fires. Bench takes ball three, low and inside, full count. Runners take their leads, a payoff pitch, swung on and ripped foul down the left field line. Keep it full up on bench. Mira looks down to tennis, and he pitches. Grounder foul off third. An amazing thing about Bench's home runs on the road. He's now hit 19 in this ballpark, ranking it second on his list of road parks. He's hit 28 at Atlanta Stadium, and that's another surprising statistic in view of the fact this ballpark does not surrender home runs very often. 3-2 pitch. That's ball four, and that loads him up with nobody out. So a single, a double, and a base on balls. Jerry Coleman... Slowly out of the San Diego dugout, making his way toward the mound, and simultaneous with that move, we're going to get somebody up and throwing in the Padres' bullpen. Looks like John D'Aquisto will start to loosen up a right-hander. Right now running on back to second. So a big, big opportunity presents itself here for the Cincinnati Reds. Mira will work from the windup. And his first pitch to Oster. That's a breaking ball downstairs. Ball one. One zero pitch. Call strike. A fastball on the outside corner. Richards playing Ronnie, batting left-handed, straight away and left. Winfield shading him toward left, or Mumphrey shading him toward left and center. And Winfield pull well off the line and right. That is down low, two and one, as Tennis digs it out of the dirt. The walk to Johnny Bench, the second allowed by Mura. Walk Collins to begin the game. Two one pitch. Slide drive, base hit, center field. Here's one run in. They will hold night at third to keep the bases loaded. Jerry Mumphrey firing a strike that's cut off on the mound by Montanez, but Oster singles up the middle to drive in a run, and it's a two-to-one ball game. Uh, 
Here's Charlie Liebrand. Third run batted in for Ronnie Oster. Lee Brand at the plate is three for 17. Well, the Reds cut the deficit to one run. Still nobody out. Bases remain loaded. Lee Brand takes a strike. John Diaquisto still loosening in the San Diego bullpen as Mura finds himself in deep water in the second inning. One ball and one strike. Spillman started it with a line drive single to right. Ray Knight doubled high off the wall and left. Johnny Bench got a walk and Ronnie Oster rams a line drive single up the middle to get a run in. 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Reds now with four hits. The Padres have had three. Mira stretches, pauses, and pitches. Lee Brandt takes it just below the knees, evening things out at two and two. Right hander checks Ray Knight back to the plate. Fly ball, center field. That's going to be deep enough to get the tying run in. Jerry Mumphrey makes a catch. Ray Knight tagging at third, comes home to score. We're tied, and Lee Brand gets the job done. Charlie's first RBI knocks things up at two and two. Bench holds at second. Oster at first, one gone, and Dave Collins is back for the second time after walking in the first inning. Mura pitches, Collins takes ball one. Dave Collins could well be the final batter that Steve Mura faces tonight if he fails to get him out. That's too low. Two balls and no strikes. And Mura doing exactly what we talked about before the game, and that's being forced to pitch from behind and forced to throw that fastball. He needs a strike against Collins and cannot get it. Ball three. Tied up at two and two. I have to be thinking Collins will be taken on this pitch. And he is. And it's ball four outside. And the bases are loaded again. And back comes... Jerry Coleman, and that'll be it for Steve Mura. Concepcion becoming the seventh man to hit in the inning. Diaquisto checking third and pitching to the plate. Fastball over for a strike. One of the hard throwers in the National League. Seemed to really start to put things together last year under pitching coach Chuck Estrada in terms of throwing more strikes and balls. That pitch is up for a ball, one and one. The pitch, low and away. It gets away from tennis. Johnny Bench will come on to score. The other runners advance, and the Reds lead it 3-2. Gene Tennis charged with a pass ball that breaks a tie and gives the Reds a run lead. Two balls and a strike to count on Dave Concepcion, and that's going to force the infield now to play in. Takes away the possibility of a double play. They've changed it to a wild pitch on Diaquisto. 2-1 delivery. Davey takes it high, ball three. Well, take away the pass ball if you're scoring with us. Charge it a wild pitch. 
And a three ball, one strike count on Concepcion with runners at second and third. Davey grounds it slowly by the mound. Making the play is Barry Evans. He throws on to Montanez as Oster comes across. Fourth run of the inning. Reds lead at 4-2 and Collins now is at third with two men out. Follow the Reds all season long at home or on the road with Joe and me. Tonight we'd like to tip our cap to these Reds Radio Network stations, WBEX AM and FM in Chillicothe, Ohio, WWWI in Columbus, Indiana, and WCTT in Corbin, Kentucky. One gone. Johnny Bench, 0 for 2. He's twice bounced out, walked his first time up and scored. He fouls it away. Bouncing past on deck hitter Ron Oster and on into the Reds dugout. Reds bullpen now quiet. In fact, both are. Bench swings and misses. No balls, two strikes. Johnny, who had the big night last night with three home runs to propel the Reds to the 5-3 to three victory. Takes it low and away from fingers for a ball. His 339 career home runs ties him with Boog Powell for 33rd place on the all-time list. And the four runs batted in give him 1,207 for his career. That's low for a ball. Two and two. Putting him two behind Bill Dickey with Barra being the only other catcher ahead of him in terms of runs batted in with 1,430. Fingers. 2-2 two -two pitch. Foul back. Also, has moved past Frank Robinson into second place on the all-time Reds list for extra base hits. Bench now has a total of 695 extra base hits in his major league career. Here's a fly ball into shallow left center field. Out is Smith, in is Mumphrey, and Jury makes a catch. Two up and two down. Ronnie Oster with two of Cincinnati's eight hits, an RBI, and a run scored in three times to the plate. Meeting on the mound involving fingers and Kurt Bavacqua. A couple of Reds farm teams losing tonight. Glenn Falls beat Waterbury 6-3 and Lakeland knocked off Tampa 5-1. And some winners last night. Indy beat Evansville 1-0 on a three-hitter by Bill Dolly. Here's a high shot. First base side. Wide of first is Montanez. Throwing back safe at first. Fingers took the high throw and went down. And that's the third hit of the night for Ronnie Oster. And boy, you talk about a guy who goes flat out down that first baseline every time. And tonight it's helped him get a couple of base hits. Well, a good lesson learned by a lot of youngsters who watch this ball game. You go down that line as hard as Oster does every time, and it's going to pay off for you. And tonight it has done just that twice for him. Marty, I think that's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's mm -hmm. only 90 feet. Like I've always said, if you can't run 90 feet, you're in serious trouble. There's a lot who don't. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Charlie Liebrand now, one for two with a sacrifice fly. Helped himself in that four-run second with a fly ball to center. Fingers delivers, and here's a fly ball hit into center field. Mumphrey started back, but now has time to come in and make the catch. So in the inning for the Reds, no runs on one hit. One left, and at the end of seven and a half, the Reds four, and the Padres two. Davey on the first pitch trying to lay one down and get Collins to second. Squares again and takes a strike. Concepcion not often called upon to bunt, but he has been asked to do that here. Has fouled off the pitch and has taken a strike. Fingers lob throwing to Montanez. Last of the ninth for San Diego. They'll have Rodriguez or rather Fingers. He'll be lifted for a pinch hitter, then Barry Evans and then Kurt Bavacqua.
two strikes. Fingers with Concepcion. Davey strikes out swinging on a pitch away. So Concepcion fails to do the job. Fingers gets his first strikeout. Ken Griffey with two doubles and four times up. He's climbed his batting average some five points up to its current 304. Reds up by a run, four to three, as Fingers throws to first again. There goes Collins. Pitch is swung on and missed. Tennis is throw down to second. No, they didn't get him. Dave Collins, his second stolen base of the night. And his 13th of the season. Tennis made a pretty good throw down to second base, but Dave, for the second time in the game and stealing second, came in the side door as he went to the outfield side of the bag. Griffey swinging on the pitch that appeared to be a strike to protect Collins. Fingers ready, looking, and pitching. Ball low, one and one. Collins at second, one out. In the ninth inning. Fingers turns around as if to throw to second base, but just a bluff move, getting Collins back into the bag very quickly. Kenny checking his swing. It's low and inside. Two and one. Reds have left eight men on in this game. They've had earlier opportunities but could not cash in on them even though they jumped out in front in the second inning with those four runs. High and outside, ball three. No fingers. Now will intentionally pass Ken Griffey with a count three and one. They make ball four intentional, so Kenny throws the bat away. He'll go on down to first base, and that'll bring up George Foster. He'll score that an intentional walk. Number 15, George Foster. George is due. He's 0 for 3 tonight. 0 for 7 in the series, was on in the 7th inning. They intentionally walked him that time. Foster now hitting 238. Swing and a miss. He has really had some kind of rough time of it trying to get started again after missing 12 games. Had that home run barrage at home. But the hits have been few and far between. Strike two, swinging. Fingers has given up only one home run, and over the years, he will not give up too many. Missed with that pitch, and they had a play on there. Montañez broke in toward the bag behind Griffey, and Tennis gave every indication in the world he wanted to throw down that way, but dropped the ball. Collins at second, Griffey at first. The infield at double play depth with one out. Fingers out in front of Foster. A ball, two strikes. Taking his time, the right-hander. Now he straightens up on the mound, kicks and throws. Foster, did he get around on it? Yes, he did. Dutch Rennett rings him up from first base. Two away. Here's Harry Spillman and Jerry Coleman going to the mound. Nobody throwing in a Padres bullpen. And Coleman not staying out there 30 seconds. Has a quick word with his pitcher and breaks it off. Stillman's hit story tonight. 
A single, a fly out, an intentional walk, and a pop-up foul at third. Number 12, Harry Silver. Well, fingers getting into trouble when Collins let off with an infield hit, stole second, Concepcion struck out. Then came the steal by Collins, an intentional walk to Griffey, Foster is fan, and Spillman swings on the first pitch and does not get it. Strike one. Harry waving the bat around. Way inside, he almost hit him with that pitch, and Tennis did a fine job of saving Raleigh Fingers a wild pitch. Inside and down. Well, the count evens on the Reds' first baseman at one ball and one strike. Outfield playing him straight away. Couple of home runs this year, and eight runs batted in. He swings and lines one into right center field. That's a base hit. Ball is cut off deep in the alley by Winfield, but Collins will score. Griffey heading toward the plate. Here's the throw. He's out. Dave Winfield, Barry Evans, Gene Tennis. Two good throws, but Harry Spillman with a big base hit to drive Dave Collins in. And in the inning for the Reds, one run, two hits. No errors and one man left on. At the end of eight and a half, the Reds five and the Padres three. Well, the way things stand right now, Lee Brandt would win his fourth and Muro would have his first decision a losing one. Swing at a miss. Might have fouled that ball out of Bench's mitt. Popped up and away from Johnny. 0-2. So the bench has come through here in San Diego for the second straight night. Last night it was Rick Arbach, four for four. Oster had an RBI single last night. There's a ball high. Tonight, Harry Spillman, two hits, a run batted in. A run scored. Ronnie Oster, three for four. You got to have that kind of play if you're going to be a contender. Strike three call. He rings him up with a fastball on the outside corner. Doug Bear has his second strikeout, and now Jerry Turner will bat for Barry Evans. Turner hit a pinch hit home run last night, his second homer of the year. He's hitting 269. Here's a shot to third base. Ray Knight picks it off a line drive off to his left as he leaped high to grab it. Turner wasting no time at all jumping on the first pitch and they're two out. So Kurt Bavacqua tries to keep the Padres alive in the ninth inning. He had a run produced, a pinch hit single rather in the seventh inning. Two out, base is empty. Turns it out away from their fourth straight win. Babacqua looks at a strike. Bear rocks, kicks, and fires. That's high, a fastball, one and one. Ozzie Smith on deck, but Doug Bear would like to end it right here with a right-handed batting Bavacqua. Up high again, two balls and a strike. Sheldon Burnside, Tommy Hume. Stay ready just in the event, but Bear throwing very well. He's faced four batters since being called on after Winfield's homer in the eighth with one out and has retired them all. 2-1 pitch. He missed with that one, ball three. Doug needs a strike. And cannot get it. Babacqua gets a two-out walk. (laughs) 
That'll bring up Ozzie Smith. He's had an infield hit and three official trips to the plate. Was credited with a sacrifice bunt in the seventh inning after one out singles by Evans and Bavacqua. And somewhat surprising, they credited him with a sacrifice bunt because he was by no means bunting with the intent to sacrifice himself. He was bunting for a base hit. So Ozzie Smith represents a tying run, but before he steps in, Paul Dave comes off the Padres bench, and he'll run for Bavacqua at first base. At first base, running for Bavacqua, number 21, Paul Dave. They're getting Fahey out on strikes, getting Turner to line to third, but loses Bavacqua. And Dade running for him. Here's a pitch to Ozzie Smith. It's high, ball one. Stretching the pitch. In there for strike one call. One ball and one strike. Reds leading five to three with two outs and a runner on in the bottom of the ninth inning. Bear studies a sign from Bench, checks a runner, 1-1 one, one pitch, strike two call. Now the pause in the pitch, and he pops him up on the infield, Ray Knight coming in toward the mound and waiting, and this one belongs to the Reds. Here in the ninth inning for the Padres, no runs, no hits, one man left on. Final score is the Reds make it four straight. Cincinnati five and San Diego three. We'll return in just a moment. Now in second place all by themselves, uh, uh, barring an Atlanta comeback in Los Angeles, which you certainly would not expect. The Dodgers would remain two up on Cincinnati, and Houston would fall three games off the pace. The Reds spotted the Padres two runs in the first inning, and uh, they got it going after two men were out. Gene Richards single, Dave Winfield on an infield hit to third, and Gene Tennis threw a base on balls before Willie Montanez lined a two-run single to left center field to give the Padres a 2-0 lead. The Reds struck for four in the second. A single by Spillman, a double by Knight, a base on balls to Johnny Bench. Ronnie Oster single to center, making it 2-1. A uh, sacrifice fly by Liebrandt tied it up, and then Bench scored the tiebreaker on a wild pitch, and a later ground out by Ken Griffey gave the Reds a 4-2 advantage. Liebrandt really settled down after giving up a couple of hits in the second. He did not allow another Padre hit until the seventh when they had back-to-back one-out singles from Barry Evans and uh, pinch hitter Kurt Bavacqua, and then after Ozzie Smith laid down a sacrifice bunt. Lee Brand got Jerry Mumphrey on a ground out to third to end that threat. The Reds scored their final run in the ninth inning after the Padres had pulled it within one on a one-out homer in the eighth by Dave Winfield, his sixth of the season. At that point, John McNamara brought Doug Bear on. He struck tennis out and got Montanez on a fly ball to end the eighth. In the ninth, a leadoff infield single by Dave Collins, who stole second. A one-out intentional walk to Ken Griffey and a two-out base hit to right center by Harry Spillman scored Collins to give the Reds a five to three lead. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Bear, after striking out pinch hitter Fahey and lining out pinch hitter Turner to third, walked uh, Kurt Bavacqua, but then got Ozzie Smith on a pop-up to third base to end the game. Reds had five runs, 11 hits, no errors, and nine left. Padres, three runs, eight hits, no errors, and seven stranded. Lee Brandt, the winner, four and three. Charlie pitched very well tonight, and Doug Bear finished it up to get his fifth save. Steve Muir, the starter and loser for San Diego, he's 0-1. The Reds will try to make it three straight tomorrow night in the 10 o'clock start Cincinnati time as Paul Moscow goes after his fourth consecutive win without defeat this season. The Padres will counter with their second left-handed starter in this series and John Curtis. He's won three and lost four. We'll be on the air with the pregame shows on most of these same stations beginning at 9.30 Cincinnati time. Again, the final score tonight in a game that took two hours and 38 minutes to play before a crowd of 26,777. The Reds five and the Padres three.